you know, outside of that, you know, as Debbie mentioned, you've done so many other projects and, and whatnot, but it's the beginnings that are of, of your life are just astonishing to me. You, you are, grew up in the projects, and yet you end up going to Yale. Mm. How, yeah, how, to Yale. Um, how can you draw that line? Is that a straight dot? Well, you know, you for know, me, I, I, I have friends who are very successful, and I, I meet a lot of people, I, and they tell me about their childhood. I had a... Uh, I had a charm childhood. I had a wonderful childhood. It was only when I stepped away from it and I hear it should have been all of these things. Mm. Because I grew up, uh, my mom died when I was three months old from tuberculosis. I never knew my dad. I grew up in the projects. Never knew anybody in the business who ever really did much of anything. Yeah. But I had an amazing grandmother who believed in spirit and the power of spirit that we're all connected to. Um, and that's my grandma there. At, uh, but it's, um, and she and what's felt her name, sorry? Uh, Arana, Arana oh, Donald. Oh. And that we are not limited, that we are all a part of spirit. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to join anybody to be that. That is who you are. And because of that, all things are possible. There are no limits. And if you dream of being an actor, which I yep. did, then the universe will provide that for you. It's such an interesting perspective. Yeah. Um, it really is, and to also to feel like you didn't have any limits, and the the world was your oyster. Because a lot of kids who would grow up in that situation they may feel not feel that way. There are limits, and they feel that they're not in the game. And one of the tragic things that we're doing to our children is making them feel like they're not in the game. And what's the point of trying? Yeah, but you know, but I, I find it so fascinating because you sit back and you say. By my standards, I had all this opportunity, mm -hmm. but if you look at what the society wants to place what upon you, lost your parents, raised you know, by your grandmother, then you all found yourself raising two children on your own oh, at no. a very yeah. young age, yeah. and yet you saw the beauty in that. Of course, because the beauty is the love. There's never been a day in my life that I doubted, that I didn't know absolutely beyond a doubt that I was loved, that I, and that was worthy of that love. How did you manage that? I know, that? Wh where no. did it come from? That all came from your grandmother? She's an amazing woman. Well, the, <laughs> hardest, the hardest thing I had to deal with was how do I deal with the fact I don't have a father. My mom died, I can get that, but who's my daddy? Everybody's got a daddy. Yeah. And my grandmother said, God is your father. And I go, Mama, God is everybody's father. She said, yeah, but everybody don't know it. I'm telling you, Seth, you'll always know it. See, and if you don't know it, it's like having money in the bank. You can't draw on it if you don't know what's there. But if you know who you are, and as a kid, I would walk around and see the birds and the trees and the leaves and all this creation. And in the middle of all this creation, God created me. Mm. How special is that? Yeah. That's you beautiful. know, the chances of any of us ever being born is like zero. But did he create an amazing father right out of the gate? Or was that a process when you were raising your two boys a, on your own that you had to kind of discover? It's an awakening of the awareness of who you truly are, that you are truly that special. So for and example, as a result, and when you know that, that's who I am. Right. So my taking on uh, being a, uh, my uh, father for my children, a real father, that's who I am. If you doubt who you are, then you can do anything. Yeah. But once you know, I don't do certain things I don't do. Right. It's not a temptation. I, stand, I, don't right. do it. I understand your kids set you straight once, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, my, yeah, my son's, uh, you know, you, you can talk about it all you want, but kids, look at what you do. Yeah, exactly. You know? And uh, I remember uh, my son turned 16. I bought him a car, and uh, he went a little crazy. He went out one night, stayed out all night. I couldn't, didn't know where he was. He oh didn't call. Goodness. And I, I, oh I searched him down, found him at one of his friend's house. He had crashed in the basement. And I went there, dragged him out, and I just got in his face. Don't you ever, ever do that again. And he said, Dad, you do it. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? He said, all the time. You, you don't come until the next day, and you go out, and we don't know where you are. And I said, oh, you know what? I promise wow. you, I'll never do it again if you don't. You can't answer with respect that yeah. you're not willing to give. No. But can I, can I say this, too, as yeah. somebody who's sort of in that situation? It good for him that right. he knew he could say that to you. That's that he so, knew he had a yes. father who would hear him and Absolutely. not just go, don't you talk back Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. Yeah, I, you know. but you were also still so young when you had your boys. You were a baby raising babies. I was very, very young, yeah. You know, my first son was born when I was 19 years old. And I didn't yeah. know, you know, I mean, I'm a single dad. I got two little boys. I don't know what that, that is. But I do know that uh, I, I can't ask for any more respect than I'm willing to give. Yeah. And you've taken you've taken all these experiences from from right out of the gate, straight from being born to raising your kids to now, and you've become a motivational speaker. I, yeah, I like to go out, especially in the community groups. I, I do a lot of uh, keynote speaking, and there's so many people who really feel they're not 
in the game. They don't have a chance. It's all stacked against them. Yeah. The government systems aren't working. The religious systems aren't supporting people. And they want to see examples of. I can tell people all day long about having good health, mm -hmm. but if I'm not an example of that health, I can tell people all day long about you should educate yourself and improve, but if I'm not an example of someone who made that sacrifice, yeah. I'd be a good father if I'm not one who walked the walk. So I think we need to be the light uh, yeah. that we talk about. But what do you say to those kids who feel like they have no hope? I say, you know what? I don't know my earthly father, but I know that I'm a son of creation, and I know that you are too, and I know that you can ask for anything, and it's yeah. given, and I truly, in my heart, believe that. You are worthy, beyond worthy.